everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I have Maxine joining me momentarily. I hope you're all having a good day. I am excited. Melissa Fibosa's body work comes out today. I'll be picking it up at my local indie bookstore today or maybe tomorrow, depending on how busy I am. Wonder what you're reading and if you're loving it. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Maxine. Hi. We Thanks did so that much. so well. That was the, we, we had no I, problems. I, you know what? I have to admit, I've been terrified. I made my, <laughs> my daughter, uh, who is way more tech savvy than me, practice with me. Well, because the practice what came I off. hear. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. I get it. I think this is your first one, right? Yes. Yeah, I think for every and this is a lot of people's first one, and I think it is a bit anxiety producing because they don't want to be like, oh, she's waiting for me. Where am I? You know, so I, it's a common concern. So good for you for practicing. I also practice. There's a practice mode, which I didn't know until they I, do. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. I, mm -hmm. I we used private accounts. And yes. Just sort of went that way. But yes, it's a know. hot tip. For anyone out there, you can just practice without having Who to knew? watch it. Yeah, which is nice. So how are you, Maxine? I'm good. And I'm, I, I'm really thrilled that we're doing it at this particular time. About a half an hour ago, there was someone with a leaf blower right outside. And I was like, oh, no, please. No, <laughs> that's not what we need. You know? uh, leaf blowers. Um, yes. Yeah. Here in Los Angeles, there are a lot of leaf blowers um, all the time. So... Yeah. Do you want to say anything else before you begin? Or? Um, I just want to thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I, this is such a cool project, Allison. Um, it's just so interesting to hear about everybody's histories. And, you know, I agree. What a what a wonderful opportunity. So thank you for yeah. starting this. It was really just serendipitous. I just loved hearing them in the workshop I was in. I thought, I want to hear more of these. And maybe there'll be some people who'll join me. And I didn't anticipate that there would be this many people. It's really, I think it speaks to how many people have something to say, you know, about yeah. themselves and their lives. And if we take a moment to listen, a lot of people have fascinating stories to share about themselves. So. So, well, thank you. I do, You're I welcome. do appreciate it. So, um, I'm excited. so anyway, uh, I guess here's, here's my poem. Okay, go for it. Okay, where I'm from, inspired by George Ella Lyon. I am from sharing black and white uh, cookies with my older sister at the neighborhood bakery where the woman behind the counter knew my mother from way back when. From beads of lemon pledge on wood grain, hard earned from a printer turned copy editor's wages, and from the used, slightly dented silver blue Chrysler that took us on motel road trips. I am from the new Michelama Co op built atop an immovable rock pushed there by the Ice Age. Tall, blonde brick with two curved windswept ramps that at winter's peak with head down, coat tight, tried your metal. I am from little bonsai trees, uh, the trunks sculpted, watered and wired by my mother's artful hands. I am from wishing on eyelashes blown off of fingertips and from I will spare you my rendition of happy birthday, you're welcome. Um, from Shirley and from Red, whose Christian name is Irving. I'm from two latchkey kids who wanted a mother at home for their own to take incoming. And I am from a yearning to learn that had one immigrant grandfather achieving Phi Beta Kappa success in his 80s. From who said life was fair? And from if you really want it, don't worry, we'll be the same millionaires. I'm from a, a devotion to science and fact with no room for immeasurable deities, but melded with an understanding of the matzo ball soup, pastrami on rye, and bagels with a schmear from whence I came. I'm from Bronx blocks ringed by family and from the Anatevkas of Eastern Europe, Seltz and Lemberg, Hatim and Selepkowitz. 
from egg creams on red stools at the candy store and pot roast and kasha vanishkas for supper. From the grandfather with the bad heart and the golden hands, the cabinet maker who built a summer place on land littered by rocks that had to be cleared by them all one by one. Just one road away from the easy property with the view never to be shown to people with accents like theirs. From garment workers with respect for union labels, the peace worker with the designer's eye and the shaky hands who told you the honest truth, as well as the tip of the brim uh, to the other, the hatter, whose mysterious illness was diagnosed by a doc who later steered her pregnant daughter-in-law clear of thalidomide's treacherous waters. From a printer's California case hanging on the wall filled with World War II Navy, do uh, Navy dog tags, Arista pins, show tickets, and an old skate key that once hung around my neck to tighten the metal clasps onto simple street shoes, transforming them into something more. All are pebbles from the original rock, bits from the hole that passed through our hands, moments in time to be handed down of an instant when things were black and white like cookies, but also rich with accents filled with color. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, I got through it. That's, that's what's important. <laughs> you did it. Um, I got such a sense of you and your history. I really, do you talk a lot about your familial stories in your family? Because I felt like so many of details of your history really specific that were moving. I felt like, oh, I'm sitting at the dinner table with your family talking about where you came from and how, what challenges and, and joys that you've had. Um, I will say like my father will, will tend to recite a lot of these stories again and again <laughs> and, and just sort of over the years, some of them have, you know what I mean, yeah. uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, sort of, become kind of family mm -hmm. lore, if you know what I mean. That's what it feels but, like. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, of course, I, you know, I, these were things, stories that were told, not a lot mm -hmm. of them. You know? Right. No, the story of the uh, building the house and removing rock by rock that um, was really evocative. And I think um, my husband's grandfather was a, uh, he made things with his hands and Oh, awesome. I, I admire that skill and uh, and they and the, the way that it goes over those things stay with us those things that they crafted is that house still in your family or is it still around yes it is that used to be um, we used to go there for summers mm -hmm. uh, it was a, originally a summer house and then my uncle at one point um, made it, you know, re refurbished mm -hmm. it and made it a year round property. And my cousin now lives there. Oh. So yes, it is still in the family. Um, but it is not quite, it's different than it used to be. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an, that's, yeah, right. That's an amazing thing. And though, I think over time to have something that belongs to your lineage in that way. Um, I don't have anything like that. So I think it sounds, and, um, I was, I related to the lemon pledge, do people use lemon pledge anymore? Or is that a thing of the past? I don't know. I mean, I don't use it anymore, but no, um, I don't either. But I was um, like, oh, is but it I just do remember me? And you could smell it and you know, you had to rub it in and you know, I liked helping with that chore. I don't think I was I helping should be in quotes. I don't think I was very helpful, but I liked <laughs> spraying it. And I liked that smell, which is like not good for me, but I liked it a lot. Um, and eyelashes. The um, wishing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, so I'm... those, did you make lots of wishes? Uh, I remember trying real hard because the the idea was if, as long as it blew off, you got your wish, but if it stuck, you were, you didn't. So I can remember as a kid, like really trying to make sure that, um, you know. If you get it off in one blow. Right. right. Exactly. You're, that was the idea, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very hard. It sounds like you've sticky. done that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're real sticky. So it's hard to get it off. Yeah. I loved anything with wishing. I was, I, 
I think most children do. Yeah, dandelions, um, little birthdays. Um, but I didn't like keeping the wishes to myself. I didn't like that construct that you couldn't say it out loud because then it wouldn't come true. I didn't. Yeah, like that. I, I, that's sort of counterintuitive when you think about <laughs> it. You know. <laughs> It goes against the idea of manifestation, doesn't it? Exactly. Are we supposed to be talking about what we want out of our lives? Um, that's true. Say it loud. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your experience writing this? Was it, you know, and did you pick a certain version of yourself or did it just sort of come to you or what was your experience? This was definitely um, like my younger self, like before college, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. And it, And to be honest, I was thinking about it and I know it went a little long and part of it was it, I felt like it had to include my grandparents because mm -hmm. they lived so close. Um, literally I had one set of grandparents that lived like two blocks away mm -hmm. and then a grandmother who lived like four, four blocks in the other direction. And there was also an aunt who uh, a great aunt mm -hmm. who lived uh, like two blocks down the other way. So I'm saying it was just, you know, literally ringed by, yeah you know, family, so to speak. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, the I, you know, I'm not sure. But the, yeah. That Go was ahead. my experience of being a kid. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it sounds like it was positive. Yeah. No, definitely home. positive. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't want to be surrounded by family, um, but it sounds like it was embracing and encouraging. So, um, well, it was kind of a very like neighborhoody place, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And, mm -hmm. um, and it was, was it? cool because like we had just, we were the, um, it was built like when I was two years old. So the building that I, I lived in. So we were the first, everybody was new in the building, so to speak. So that was kind of cool because it was a family kind of building. That is cool. Did you find that new, not new, were you surprised at the memories that surfaced or was it just what you anticipated or, you know? I'm trying to, th um, I, I did find I was choosing between things. Um, and it's, uh, there's so much to choose from that inevitably. And I was trying to, I, I must admit, I was trying to make sure everybody got something, if you know what I mean, as opposed to, <laughs> you know, uh, if one yeah. thing was really, you know, there may have been some more memorable things, but <laughs> I was trying to divvy it up a little bit. <laughs> that was, that was nice of you. Um, I understand. I, I think I wanted to acknowledge everyone. There's my dog. Um, I wanted to acknowledge everyone I felt like was a part of my life at that time. Um, exactly, exactly. So you do, you you do understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't just uh, yes. There's certainly other memories, but it's sort of it's, there is a balancing act involved. I think, and that's why I. I there are choices made. And I found that process as interesting as almost anything else. Like what did I choose and what, um, what sort of bubbled to the surface? Um, it wasn't necessary. That's what I like about the prompts is that it sort of, um, it gets in there in a different way than if I was just sitting and thinking about, Oh, what, it, what was my childhood like? Oh, I don't think yeah. I could have written this at all. I, I mean, I so do not consider myself inclined to poetry. <laughs> and it was like, I, I know you said this before, but it really is true. It's like Mad Libs, mm -hmm. you know, okay, I write this and then mm -hmm. I just have to think of this kind of memory. Okay, I can do that. That mm -hmm. was why I was sort of willing to do it. If you had said, tell me about your childhood and write in poetry form, I never would have even tried. Yeah, me too. I was even intimidated by this at first because some of the ones that people read out loud, I was like, oh, oh yeah, it's really um, <laughs> impressive. And, and they are, but I think I'm interested too in how many people don't consider themselves poets or writers or whatever it is. And I haven't really like dove in with people, but did you have an experience where someone told you you weren't a poet or you just don't feel comfortable with the form or why do you say you're not a poet? It's just kind of, that's so funny because when I was in third grade, I had a poem published in um, the school newspaper. And that's like the last time I wrote a successful poem. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And yes, I, just, I, do. I, I don't consider myself, you know, um, a, a poet. Um, that it's not, I, I guess I just, 
I've I, I've written some fiction, and I I'm a you know a journalist, yeah, and memoirist, uh, mm -hmm. memoirist. Mm -hmm. um, I know what you mean. So, um, <laughs> it is a bit of a memoirist too. So memoirist, you know. yeah. <laughs> I mean, a memoirist at least. Um, yeah, I had a teacher who told was very negative. I took a poetry writing course, um, and she was just not encouraging, and oh, it was just kind of like. Oof you know, about my writing. And I, I realize now looking back on it when I had teachers, particularly, well, you know, I think really almost any teacher who, because I was getting positive feedback elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So if I had a teacher who was like, mm, this isn't your thing, I was like, okay, you know best. This isn't my thing. And, yeah, no, and I, the role that power. teachers can play is so powerful. It really <laughs> is. Yeah. And, and, I, and to them, it might have been offhand, or maybe it was, um, in their opinion, uh, constructive criticism. You know, and I just wasn't able to bear how critical <laughs> construction, the constructive criticism was. But I, I think sometimes we underestimate how, how much we defer to others to tell us our worth, or I certainly have underestimated it. And now looking back on it, I'm like, oh, I, I can take that back. No, I absolutely understand that. And I'm sure, you know, somewhere along the line, somebody must have, I, I don't remember offhand, right. but I'm sure somebody must have said, oh, you know, stick to fiction or something, whatever, you know. Um, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so I just never felt comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. But but I thank you for uh, for well, like thank encouraging you. me to try this. <laughs> I, I, I am also like so gratified all the people who... I've got to know on social media, meeting them in this way, it really helps to just say hello and see your face. And, you know, it's because I feel like I know people, but it's nice to, to get to know each other better even. So I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity as well. No, I, I do. I am too. I mean, I feel, I feel like I, as particularly cause you do this so often, I feel like, you know, like I've spoken with you before, right. but of course we haven't. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's um, what happens. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's, it's been, a, I, that is one of the things that has happened with, for me with this pandemic is reaching out beyond physical boundaries and getting to know people. And, and before this, I'd have been like, ah, oh, this isn't really, you know, I'm not really meeting people. Granted, it's different, but it is, it is connection. And it, it got me through the pandemic, uh, collaborating and getting to know people and, fostering relationships in a way that I hadn't before. No, absolutely. Like the, uh, our group and, you know, mm -hmm. just in, in, just in, it's amazing. It, you, you feel like you're um, having a quick cup of coffee, so to speak with yeah. somebody, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Anything that helps me feel less alone. I'm, I'm on board. And this, this helps me feel like, Oh, there's other people out here thinking these thoughts and, and the universality of, of the, of the specifics, which I always talk about in memoir writing, you know, the more specific we get, the more universal it is. And I think these poems really speak to that. Like, no, absolutely. I remember in watching one of your other poems, um, somebody else used the, who said life was fair, but yeah. I decided to use it anyway, because I thought it was, you know. Yes. It's, I mean, that one, <laughs> I've had to force myself not to say that as a parent, like, this isn't helpful. I'm, I'm not going to say this, even though I'm, te I'm tempted, you know, no, in moments, no. but it's not really, they don't want to hear that. No, <laughs> the things that them. fall out of your mouth that um, you, you don't intend, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, who said that? Yeah. Especially when you're exhausted and overwhelmed. That's when all the real, the real gems come out. It's like, oh, <laughs> I need to go walk away for a minute and just get a hold of myself. Uh, so I, I teach my children that and I try to practice what I preach. Like, just take a minute, walk away, take a deep breath. You'll yeah. be glad you Not did. always successful, but I do try to. Right. Well, it's good to just have the goal. Um, anything else before we wrap up? No, again, I just really, I thank you. This was such oh. a cool opportunity. Um, it's so good I, to see you. I'm yes. so glad you joined me and I loved your poem. And I just, it's just, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. And I really <laughs> mean that. 
Oh. Well, I mean it. So, um, okay. Anyway, thank you, Maxine. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Allison. It's okay. been a pleasure. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.